Hey everybody, welcome. Thanks so much for being here. And uh, let's kind of get right on into this. I'm in Miami tonight, getting ready to do an in-home here for our uh, team down here. Uh, but what I wanted to do was, was take you guys back to a time for me where things were extremely frustrating, where the phone was ringing on a regular basis and it wasn't because somebody wanted to say hi. It was somebody was looking for money and, and there was a lot of that going on in my world. Uh, about four years ago. So how do we go from that level of frustration to where we're being hounded financially, which, you know, there's a lot of people where it's it's frantic time for them right now, right? But how do we get them from, from that whirlwind of being frantic, that panic state to this, right? Isn't that the key? Isn't that what we want? Isn't that the goal, right? So So to get them from that financial point of of meltdown to where they can finally sleep at night knowing that their bills are paid. They can breathe a little bit. They can take a little bit of a break. That's, that's why I do the trainings that I do. Period, end of sentence, end of story. Is to show people exactly how it is that, that we can go from one extreme to another. But we've gotta, we've gotta make a commitment that we're gonna fight back hard. You know, that was, that was the way I did it, folks. You know, in, in a complete nutshell, was my commitment to my family that I was going to fight back. And it wasn't a commitment that I verbalized to my family. It was a commitment in my heart that I knew that I wanted better and that there was nobody going to help me or bail me out. And I had to figure it out myself. So but it started with that level of passion and commitment to agree that we're going to fight back. We're going to fight back hard. Right. So for me, knowing that we can get there. I'm going to ask you the question, what's going to cause you to experience success at the level that us as enterprises experience? What's it going to, what's it going to take for you to stay that determined and that disciplined? I can't answer that. All I can do is show you the A to Z path, right, in, in, in the accelerated format. But what is it that you can, can call up from time to time that will keep you in the game, that will keep you focused? and solid. Well, for me, my emotion was fueled by many things. The first one was how upside down financially I was. I didn't even like going to the mailbox, let alone, you know, answering phones. And the bills were piling up for me at an incredible level. And I was embarrassed. I was deeply embarrassed. How could I, as somebody that had put millions of dollars away, how could I have lost it all? How was I going to face people, right, that knew that I had been extremely successful one time, at my level anyway, right, we had an incredible quality of life, and, and with the embarrassment came the humiliation. I'll give you a small example of that. I lived on a private gated country club on the tee box of the number seven hole in this 6,000 square foot house where I couldn't even afford the $1,000 a month membership dues. And I, and I just imagined everybody driving by saying, poor Mikey, poor Mikey. And I was so humiliated that that caused me to become so motivated beyond anything ever again. But I had to go even to this extreme. Well, this is not me in the picture. This was me for nine days. When I ran out of money, it was July of 2010. I hit Enterprise on July 31st. And I'd run out of money. And I was in Hawaii on Oahu, and, and, and this was what my life ended up coming down to. But then I hit enterprise. And was I making money along the way? Yes, I was, but I was living in hotels for nine months. I was in, in the seediest of hotels. And I, I had you know, a rental car bill. I had to eat. I had children back on the mainland. So I had to sacrifice something for me to be able to take care of my family while I was building my business. But this was my bottom. And this was such a painful bottom for me for nine days of my life. And you know what I would do is I'd take my Tommy Bahama and my shorts uh, and, and I'd lay them down in the trunk and spray them with liquid starch and put my luggage on top of them so that I, I nobody would know. Nobody would know. And I, I did what I had to do. My, my, my resolve to not failing was so strong. And so the question is, are you going to pick up the pieces or like the masses, 
bury our head in our hands because it's absolutely a decision that we've got to make for ourselves. It's a decision that once you make it and you truly commit to it, will yield the type of results that will start showing you the light, that will start leading you to the direction that you want to go, that I'm at. And I, I, I'm so thankful that I had that commitment. While I didn't have the, the training, I didn't have the education, I didn't have the mentorship of people to show me how to do this, my desire was what was fueling me, my determination. And then coupled with my discipline, because I have an incredible amount of discipline, those elements coming together, the, the dedication, the discipline, and the desire, and making that conscious decision that I will not fail, I will pick up the pieces, is what's caused me to, to rise to the top. But here is something that was brought up to me by Shai Chevery, Endeavor One out of uh, Ontario, Canada. And hi, Shai. <laughs> and... Um, she was talking about the pendulum, and I did some research on it, and, and then I just started using it as an analogy. The pendulum goes both ways. So if you're in a spot now where things are bad, know that it's going to come back. But the decisions that you make are going to cause it to either stay where it is or to move rapidly back in the other direction, which is where financially I'd like to see everybody over towards success. But our decisions along the way, the lack of commitment or the amount of commitment, right, that we make is going to determine how quickly the pendulum gets back. But then the important part is how do we keep it to where the success side of the pendulum is? By training your teams, by doing what it is that we're doing here tonight, by sharing it with those that we know joined us for a very specific financial reason. Does this make sense, folks? I, I, I don't want to, to, to ramble on. I want to make sure that you guys are understanding this and that it's logical and that it does make sense because this pendulum swings both ways, right? There are different times of our life where things are good and then things are bad, and then things are good again and things are bad. It can be emotional. It can be personal in, in our relationships. It can be financial, right? Well, if we can take care of the financial one, that is going to help so many of the other elements, because we know that one of the number one causes for marriages to dissolve is financial issues. Okay, so this is such an important part of exactly what you need to recognize is coming. In some cases, we're already there, but now we're holding your hand and showing you what it is that you can do, and in our view, must do, that will get you there. Okay? So when it does start to come back in your favor, are you going to be ready for it? Right? Are you going to be training people along the way, recognizing when momentum is picking up pace in your organizations? Or what are you going to do with it? Then right now we're successful. What are we going to do with it? Well, I suggest strongly that we teach every single person that said yes to us and yes to them. And if we keep that moral obligation alive, your business will thrive. And I need to share a statistic with you guys because I'm often asked, how is it we can tell when this business is working, when the training is working? Well, I, I was very blessed to see that my group volume for last month, the month of March, was up over 50%. Those of you that have been in this business for any length of time, the longer you're in, the bigger your team, the harder it is to have growth in those first five levels. And I can tell you that 6,000 of the 50% increase was new product, and the balance of that, over 20,000, was a direct result of the training working for us. Okay, so I want you all to experience that, but understand that success can be short-lived if we're complacent with it, right? We've got to remember what took us from being devastated to being successful, and that's why I like to train the way I do, which is not what it's like at the top as an enterprise, 
I, I don't, I, you know, yeah, I'll tell you about that, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll hint towards it, and it is, it's, it's remarkable and it's wonderful, but my goal is to teach you how to get there, not what it's like to be here. That doesn't pay your bills, right? So the proven track record that we offer that yields results is what you have to commit to share. Because as I said earlier, the desire has to be there. And then if you're determined and you bring discipline into that mix, what you're going to experience is incredible, incredible results. Let's talk a little bit about discipline. For me, this is how I carve up my day. 60% of my day is IEAs, which is income earning activities. 20% of my day is then spent on personal development. At home, I have four books that sit on my desk. Depending on the mood that I'm in, Depends on which one I'm going to read. And I read for 10, 15, 20 minutes. I, 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 I can't, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm a little ADD, but I like to say that it's an HD because um, I, I, if I stay too long doing, reading a book or something, I can, I can get um, uh, lost in it, like not even really comprehending it. So I'll spend 15 to 20 minutes because I know that's my strong 15 to 20 minutes that I can dedicate. And then I'll spend 10 minutes planning launches and planning sessions. And then another 10% of my time is teaching, training, mentoring people that absolutely want this. So carve up your day. You guys can take this model, 60% is prospecting, three-way calls, right? Inviting to launches, inviting to meetings, and then 20% can be reading a book, understanding the industry a little bit for a half an hour a day. And then you can spend some time doing um, uh, the, uh, Inviting, uh, teaching people about their launches, you know, and scheduling their launches, and also the planning sessions, and then teaching people in your teams exactly how to do this. Now, guys, I'm here in South Florida. This Saturday, I'm doing four hours of MLM boot camp. You know, we've been success cycled to death to a certain degree. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting as if you're brand new and, and, and exactly what, what caused me to become fired up all the way through for four hours of MLM style boot camp training where it's direct, it's not going to waste your time, it's going to deliver information that's going to change your life if you allow it to in a logical way by explaining it to you. Okay, and that's this Saturday at the Double Tree Hotel on Military Trail at PGA, uh, registration 9 30 a.m. I reps are 10 bucks ahead. But what do we do now? How do we systematically get there? Okay, how do we get to, to be successful? Backing into the goals. You know, if you want to be in Endeavor 3 in 90 days, or Endeavor 5, or an enterprise, take that number, that, that 75,000 as an enterprise, and if you've got 50,000 in volume today, you've got to make up that 25,000 difference. How do we do that? Well, we can have a, an incentive for everybody in your team to sign up people at the $1,000 level, and they would get a maybe a, um, a raffle into a free iPad, right? Or maybe it's, um, you know, have, helping 30 people in your team each sign up three. So now you've added 100 people. Whatever it is, lay it out systematically so you know that if you've got 25,000 in volume that you need to fill, you've got a multitude of ways of getting there. Every person that you sign up, you should be asking if their spouse needs this product. That would double your effort, your, your results of your efforts, would it not? Okay, so, so by backing into the goals, understanding what it is at the beginning of the month that you desire for the end of the month, and then working into it, or quarterly, or big picture, annually. Okay, so focus on what it is that you want, where you are today, what it's going to take to bridge those two gaps. Right? Encouraging bulk orders. So we have some product behind us. So every time somebody signs up, we can hand them their case. So they start drinking it immediately and then have their case delivered to us. If we all did this, you would see such an increase in volume in your organization. What if you were able to sign up 15 people with your team's help and we were able to get half of them to venture three in that month? What does that look like? Well, now we've got uh, 36 people that have been added to your business. 
What if one of them decides they want to get to Endeavor One? That's 12 bodies, right? So, so we, we have to be disciplined enough to make the commitment to get to our goal, but first you've got to lay the goals out. You have to understand what the goals are. We talked a little bit before about getting complacent. Don't get cocky or complacent. If you've got some growth going on in your organization, be thankful. But now what you've got to do is you've got to grab it and benefit from it, yes. But what you've got to do now is identify the leaders. Train the heck out of everybody. Don't lose. And a perfect example of that is Dr. Sherry, Endeavor 5. She's had hundreds of people join her organization in the last 90 days. And she's stepping in and stepping up in a way that all those people will be thanking her shortly because she's not letting it get away from her. I also ask people to call people that are not active. So when somebody says to me, you know, Mike, I, I have nobody else to call. I'll say, what about the 50 people that are in your business that have already said yes? How about we call them? Right? Identifying momentum within, looking for it, knowing what to do with it. Right? All we have to do is plug them in to the events that are coming up, the training that we offer, right, systematically, and you've got a business partner. Creating urgency with launches and planning sessions, rank advancements, you know, congratulating your team when they hit Venture 3, when they get to Venture 4, Endeavor 1. Two Venture 3s there, right? So congratulating people, acknowledging them for their accomplishments. Having standing weekly meetings, you guys have heard this a thousand times, right? A standing weekly meeting for launches in addition to Wednesday night when Dr. Kathy and I do the 8 o'clock Eastern Time BizOp webinar, and then at 9 o'clock we have the Latina webinar with Carolyn Jones, Endeavor 5, Dr. Lorenzo Farias, Venture 4, and they do the exact same presentation for our Spanish-speaking partners at 9 o'clock on Wednesday nights. Okay, so we're doing what we can to help. We need you now to start stepping into a position that's comfortable, and even if it's not fully comfortable, it's okay because it will be shortly. By having standing meetings weekly for launches and planning sessions and or trainings, your business will blow you away. Because now everybody that's new to your organization has an event to invite to. They know, okay, Tuesday nights is Dr. Sherry's house or Sherry B's house. Right? So if they're out and about, they can say, hey, it's Monday night. Um, tomorrow night we're having a meeting. Can you come on over and check it out and see what we're up to? All of this is important information that the, the sooner you plug into it effectively, the quicker your results will be. So here's a quiz. What I want you guys to do is um, hit, if you're on a PC, I can't help you if you're on a Mac. If you're on a PC, hit the control button and hold it down and then go up to the top right where it says print screen. I'm sorry, it's function uh, next to control, function FN, and then print screen. And take this quiz. Keep it handy. Ask yourself. Go over it and go over it again. Make sure that, that, that your why is in place. Why is it that you want to build this business? How will you maintain your excitement and stay focused? What will your success ensure you never experience again? Guys, those are very important questions. And the sooner we allow ourselves to answer them accurately, emotionally, the better the chance that you're never going to go away and you will be here. And when the music does stop, you will have a chair at the big table and you will be earning six figures a year minimum of the people closest to you, which one specifically will, you pre will prevent you from succeeding? Why do I say that? Because avoid them. Don't allow them to get in your head. How do you plan on reaching your goals and the goals of your teammates most importantly? What is it? Have you laid out a plan? What is it that you're going to do? Okay, I'm going to do eight launches this month, four planning sessions, and I'm going to do two, two training uh, um, step ones and, um, and then advanced trainings. Right? What, what goals are you setting out there? Are you starting goals from, you know, like a month from now? How about we break it we go out a little bit, go 90 days, six months, a year. We know that a year is going to happen. 
I mean, good gosh, I'm coming up on four years in Jusuro. I never could have imagined it. I can't believe how fast it's gone. What do you feel you've done before that has been effective in life? And what do you feel hasn't been effective? Right? Reduce what's never worked and exploit what has worked. Are you willing to be coachable and let go of the past? You can't embrace the future, guys, if you're still holding on to what's not working. Okay, and, and you know what? I'm, I'm living proof. I mean, it was, it was heartbreaking. I had 16,000 square feet of office, warehouse, and manufacturing space in Santa Ana, California. The forklifts would be running around. The embroidery machines would be singing. The silkscreen machines. <clears throat> and to close that down was like a baby, losing a child. But it's the single best thing I've ever done for my family, for those that I'm responsible for. Yeah, did it have a negative impact on the people that worked for me for 14 years? Yes, and I'm deeply sorry. I kept them employed for three years longer than I probably should have. But I've got to answer to my family. We, this is important times. Will you prejudge people to try and save yourself time? Oh, that person's too rich. They don't need the money. Oh, that person can't possibly afford this. Or will you be simply open for business everywhere you go? Right? You can either make excuses or money, but you can't do both. So if you're going to make excuses for people why they won't do this without having asked them, I want to let you know that I believe that that's being selfish. Because what we have does work. And the reason we're not sharing it is not because we're judging them. It's because we're afraid of them saying no to begin with. True? <laughs> right? So we use these excuses, these rationalizations, to disguise the main reason why. Well, this Saturday, here in South Florida, in Palm Beach Gardens, if you can get there, I guarantee you personally that you will come out of there with a whole different respect level for what we're doing and who we're doing it with and how best to, to approach people and implement all of our trainings. Will you agree to no longer procrastinate and or make excuses for why things aren't better? Right? So many people want to play the blame game. And you know what? I did it. You know, I licked my wounds and I cried over, you know, my, you know everything I'd gone through. But none of that caused me to earn another dollar. So what I'm teaching you guys is not, I'm not a psychiatrist, okay? I'm not your shrink. What I'm here to do is show you how to get to A to Z. Z, you identify as you're being successful, whether it's a dollar amount or whatever it is, and I'll show you exactly what to do day in and day out. But you got to do it. And I will always be here to help you do that. So um, no I rip left behind. It's not just a tagline. All right, I love my team. I love, I love what we're doing. I love seeing the lives that are changing. You know, and, and, and Dr. Sherry, I got to use you to explain that. Um, when you called me back in August because you were able to pay for Jesse's private school and you were very emotional, and I got emotional hearing how emotional you were, that you would hit a goal, a goal that you knew that could not be realized unless you were able to be successful enough in Jasura. Those are the types of things that by plugging in, we can get everything we want out of this as long as we plug in in a way that yields results, doesn't spin our wheels. You've often heard me say, you know, are we pretending to do this, right? Don't pretend. Roll the sleeves up. Let, let's have some fun with it while we reinvent ourselves. And that's exactly why I'm here in South Florida. And you know what, guys? I'm excited to be here. Um, those that, that, that want any help, call me, email me. You know how to get in touch with me. Whatever I can do to further your business, count on it as long as you're doing the right activities. No I rep left behind. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll see you guys back at 10 o'clock with a ho another whole topic. And, um, yes, tomorrow, um, well, the one-on-one -on -one meetings are completely booked for the entire day. And then we've got a um, Hilton Garden Inn PGA meeting Wednesday, if you're in South Florida and you want a one-on-one -on -one meeting for an hour, contact me and book it. I've got one or two booked, which means I've got four or five open during the day. And then we have an in-home at Amy's house uh, Wednesday night. Uh, we've got a planning session Thursday night at Public Screenwise 
on PGA, and then Double Tree Hilton Military Trail PGA, 9.30 a.m. Saturday registration for MLM Boot Camp Marathon, four hours and uh, 10 bucks a head. There will be lunch there if anybody wants. You, you got to pay for it, but it's available. So thanks, everybody, for being here. I'll see you back at 10.